Hi, today we're going to solve a discrete system problem dealing with system block diagram of a discrete system, convolution sum properties, and DTFT properties. So for the problem, we are given a discrete time causal LTI system as shown here, and we need to find the difference equation for the system, frequency response of the system, the impulse response of the system, and the, some system responses for a given set of inputs. So let's get started. So to find the system difference equation, we can inspect the system block diagram. So to start with, we can, we can look at the output and have y of n, and then if we continue down this feedback loop, we'll hit a delay block here. So this is a one delay, which is shift to the right, and we have a gain on it, which is a 5, 6 gain. So 5, 6 y of n minus 1. And then we're adding that, so to another delay block, as shown here, and it has a gain of negative one six, so negative one six y of n minus two. And then we're adding both of those to our input with a gain of one. So we have plus x of n. Now, this is the correct difference equation for the system. However, we can also write this equation in the input to output form, which will make it easier for our later questions we have to answer. So let's do that. So what we have to do is take all of our outputs here, this y of n and this one, and write them on the left side and leave the x of n on this side. So we can do that. So we get y of n minus 5, 6 y of n minus 1 plus, because it was negative before, 1, 6 y of n minus 2 equals x of n. Now, we can also multiply by a 6, so that'll get rid of these fractions and make it just a little bit easier for us. So let's do that also. So 6y of n minus 5y of n minus 1 plus, plus 1y of n minus 2 equals 6x of n. And this is our input to output form difference equation. So now to find the frequency response of the system, we can transform this difference equation into the frequency domain and then solve for y of omega over x of omega. But to do that, we need to know one property, and that is the time shift property. So for any discrete function, that is shifted by some k, it transforms into an e to the jk omega times the transform, the dtft of that function. So using that, with this difference equation, we get 6y of omega minus 5 e to the j omega is shifted by 1 y of omega plus e to the j 2 omega y of omega equals 6 x of omega now, 
we can rewrite this as 6 minus 5 e to the j omega plus e to the j omega 2 times y of omega equals 6 of of x of omega and now we can just do a little algebraic solving here and we can get x y of omega over x of omega equals 6 over 6 minus 5 e to the j omega plus e to the j omega 2. And if we realize that this right here is our h of omega. So that is our transfer or our frequency response of the system. Okay, now that we have found the frequency response of the system, we can find the impulse response by taking the inverse transform of the frequency response. However, the form it is in now would be very difficult to transform it back into the time domain. So we need to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation on the frequency response to get it into a good form. Also, I have let r equal to e to the j omega to make it a little bit easier when doing the algebraic manipulations. So to start with, we can see that the, the ratio can be, the denominator can be factored. So we get 6 over 3 minus r times 2 minus r, which we can divide the top and bottom by 6, and you'll see why later how we do that. So we get 1 minus 1 third r times 1 minus 1 half r. And we can see this is equal to a sum of ratios, and that, that's because of the partial fraction decomposition, which we can see a is 1 minus 1 third r plus b is 1 minus 1 half r. Now to find a and b we can use Heaviside's method. So a is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 half r when r is equal to 3 and that'll give us a is equal to negative 2 we get b is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 third of r when r is equal to 2 and that gives us b is equal to 3 so now we can rewrite h of omega when substituting back in for r as h of omega equals negative 2 over 1 minus 1 third e to the j omega plus 3 over 1 minus 1 half e to the j omega. Now, using the transform pair of e to the n, u of n transforms into 1 over 
minus p e to the j omega for the magnitude of p less than 1. And that's what we have here. So now we can write h of n is equal to negative 2 with the negative 2 on top times 1 third is our p for this one. So 1 third to the n u of n plus 3 times 1 half to the n u of n. And that is our impulse response. Finally, to find the system response of an input function, we can take the convolution of the input function and the impulse response that we just found. Now, for the first signal that we were given, if we take the transform of that signal first, we get 1 minus 1 third, and this is a time shift, so that time shifting property applies here again. That's just j omega. We get that x omega equals 1 minus 1 third j omega. And if we know that y of omega equals x of omega times h of omega, which is equal to what we just got, e to the j omega over 1 minus 1 third e to the j omega times minus 1 half e to the j omega. We can see that there's two that cancel out here, the, the, the transform for the x and then one of the factors in the bottom, in the denominator from h. And then we get the y of omega 1 over 1 half e to the j omega. And if we use that transform pair that we used earlier, we can find that y of y1 of n is equal to 1 half to the n u of n. Now, for the second function, we see that this is a e to the j pi n. Now we can take the convolution of it and h of n, or we can find the transform of just x2 of n. However, it's actually a property of the convolution sum called the eigenfunction property, which says that any function that is passed in a system, and it is the system response with a scaled version of it, then it is an eigenfunction, and that's what this is. So what we can do is y2 of n equals x2 of n involved with h of n, which due to that property is really e to the j pi n of h of pi. Now, you can say that's equal to e to the 6 e to the j pi n over 
And if we take the original version for 8, 6 minus 5 e to the j pi plus 2 e to the j 2 pi. Now, if we realize from our unit circle that <clears throat> e to the j pi and e to the j 2 pi, well, e to the j pi is negative 1 and e to the j 2 pi is 1, we can rewrite that as 6 e to the j pi n over 6 plus 5 plus 1, which is 6 twelfths e to the j pi n. Or y2 of n equals 1 half e to the j pi n. And there is our system response. And thank you for watching.